Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my Q&A. Every Thursday I make these videos where I answer your questions, so drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them all next week. So let's get started. Uh, I'm doing something a little different today. Usually I copy all the questions to my laptop and read them from that, but I didn't have the internet on my laptop, so I'm reading them off my cell phone. So I apologize if I miss anybody's questions this week. Um, first question comes from Sanctuary City or Bust. And your question is, would you rather live, travel in an RV or your van if money was not a factor? Um, a really simple RV, I, they just, I guess if money wasn't a factor, then I could have some, like, newer one that isn't going to have a bunch of problems. But RVs have problems. They're made to go camping a couple weekends a year or something. They're not, not, they're not made to be lived in, generally speaking, so... They don't really hold up that well, and they just have all kinds of problems. And I don't, I like the simplicity of a van because there's not that much to go wrong. Um, it would be really nice to have a shower with me, and sometimes a bathroom. That, that has never really been like a big deal, but sometimes it would be really nice to have a bathroom. I don't have to go find one or uh, use some disgusting public bathroom. Um, next question is from, from Rubber Tramp Renegades. Are you still doing real estate photos? Um, I did it once. I've been practicing since then, and um, I'm going to try to do it here in New Orleans. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely. It's definitely going to be a thing. I've just been practicing. Uh, Little Blue Bus Adventure says, Have you thought of a short bus? Buses are cool. I always get nice comments from people about mine, and usually... All anyone sees is the outside of the gas station, etc. Still waiting for weather break so I can get to work on the inside. You know, I have thought of that. Um, yeah, I thought they would be super unstealthy. That's that's interesting that you... It seems like you're saying that it is stealthy and people only see the outside. Um, it just seems like whenever I see one, it's like... Unless it's like actually a school bus. It's like somebody lives in that thing or they're traveling it and it's badass. Um, yeah, it would be cool. They're just... They're just so big. I mean, this little little tiny Astro van I have, like, I fit in this thing just fine. The only time it's ever a problem is when I'm trying to um, have a comfortable place to sit down. Because I, I have to lay down in here or sit in one of the front seats and the steering wheel's in my way or the, uh, the passenger side just isn't really big enough. So, yeah, I guess the short bus would be cool. I like the I like the mileage I get in this van, though, and the maneuverability. I can drive this thing anywhere. Um, next question comes from Josh Blund. Uh, your question is, hey, dude, how's your photography going? What programs are you used to edit your photos? Um, photography is going great. I went out today. I left the – I went the big camera. Today's like day one in New Orleans, and I pretty much just went exploring uh, for most of the day. I'm totally exhausted now. The city is so overwhelming. But there's plenty here to take pictures of. Um, I left my camera in the van because I didn't want to walk around with it until I had got like a real feel of the neighborhoods and stuff. Um, just because it, it it is a, a city and there is crime here, so I wanted to want to make sure I wasn't gonna get it mugged and stolen from me. Um, as far as what programs I use, Lightroom and Photoshop. Mostly Lightroom. I don't like to use Photoshop. It's so complicated. I really don't like it at all. I'm learning a couple things, but it's so counterintuitive. But on the other hand, Lightroom is so intuitive and so easy to use. It's incredible. I love Lightroom. Mr. Bud says, how are you, man? I am great. I am tired, but I am great. New Orleans is like no place on earth. <laughs> this place is amazing. Jim Boyd says, do you watch any... Sailing YouTube channels, Sailing SV Delos or Sailing La Vagabond. Yes, I watch both. I love both. Especially Sailing La Vagabond. I don't know what is so special about their videos, but they're just really enjoyable to watch. I just really like them. The uh, the SV Delos ones are really cool, too. They have their own vibe, but like the, the Sailing La Vagabond, there's just a certain vibe that they make with those videos. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but I really dig it. Broham seven T F says, "Are you still vaping?" Yes. Um, Vape Wild E Juice. I make my own juice. One of the things that I like about it is I can make my own juice. I don't have to spend any money on it at all. Where cigarettes are stupid expensive. David Hewitt asks, um, 
Do you read a lot? And if so, have you read any Murray Rathbard? No, I don't read a lot because I have ADD and I'll read a sentence and I'll be thinking about something else and I'll reread the sentence and I'll be thinking about something else and I'll be read the sentence and thinking about something else and it drives me crazy. It takes me like an hour to read like a paragraph. It's so hard for me to read because my mind is just and I just can't focus, man. So no, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't read much. I have heard of Bitcoin. I don't use it because I, I just haven't looked up. I don't. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't felt the need to. I guess. Anthony asked, "What type of battery do you have in your van?" I have. It's from Sears. It's a something gold. It's like Duralast gold or something. Uh, AGM sealed, deep cycle. Uh, it's a ninety-three amp hour. I definitely like to have more, like two hundred amp hours. Hayden Warner asked, "Tell me about your earliest cherished childhood moment that makes you who you are." Oh, that's hard, man. Cause who am I? Um, riding quads out in fields and dirt bikes, just riding and just being completely in the moment. The only thing that matters is me and the motorcycle and the badass field that I'm in. That's got that's got to be it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's got to be it. And photography question, what lenses do you own and prefer? I just have the kit lens that came with my camera and a Takina 11 through 16 2.8. I would love to get a um, 300 millimeter 4.5 uh, prime for wildlife, which is a full frame lens. So on my uh, crop sensor camera, it will be more like, I think, 450-ish, somewhere around there. Um, so that will be perfect for birds. It will be awesome for birds. And then I'd like to get a couple primes too. But, um, yeah, I do enjoy wildlife photography. I love it. The next question is from Snail Bee Mast. Snail Bee, Snail Bee Mast. Big qu my big question is how do you deal with the constant lack of understanding from your friends, family, and acquaintances? It's hard for me, especially with my parents, who have no earthly idea why I would want to live at, like a homeless person. I've given them resources, books, explained myself pretty clearly, but there's still a major gap in understanding. Why does it matter what they think? I... I I've never felt like anybody completely got me, and I don't think anybody ever can, because I've lived my own subjective experiences. I've all these things that I've gone through. There's nobody else in the world that knows what I know and has experienced what I've experienced. So how could they ever possibly completely understand me? It sounds like more like you're asking about how do you deal with people not approving of what you're doing, but see, they're coming to it from their particular set of. Um, personal subjective experiences and what they think is right and they're projecting that onto you they're projecting their experience onto you and telling you that you're wrong for living the way you want to live because it doesn't match the way that they live and the things they believe so they're doing you a huge disservice and um by telling you that it's it's a bad idea and not approving you but it really doesn't matter because we're all gonna die like sooner than later like life just I, I'm 29 now, and I can't. I don't know what I'm gonna be saying when I'm 60 or 70 or 80 if I even live that long. Cause it's just, it's amazing how fast my life has flown by and just boom, gone. You can't live to please other people. You've got as long as you're not hurting anybody and stepping on anyone's toes. Like you gotta live for your. You gotta do the things you want to do. You can't. You can't live to to get people's approval because the more you try to make other people happy the more you're going to be miserable but on the other hand the more you say screw you I'm going to do what I want and live the life that I want to live the more you empower other people to do the same and that's doing people a real service whereas just letting people tell you oh you shouldn't do that because that's not good because I say so or because it doesn't match what I think is good or what I've experienced then then don't do that because it's bad you know what I'm saying like you gotta live for you, dude. You can't. You can't live to please other people. You just. You just can't. Cause the more. Yeah, it's just the more you try to please people, the more you're crushing your soul, and the more you're enabling them to 
project their beliefs. Whereas if you if you go get your van and you go live it up and you have one hell of a time and you see some incredible things and you come back with stories, they're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm glad he didn't listen to me. Or maybe they'll be stuck in that, that ridiculous mindset if you're going to be living like a homeless person. But that's their problem. That's not yours. Live for you. Live your life. Do the best you can with you. Be the best you you can be. And um, that will rub off other people. And the more that you become the best version of yourself, despite what anybody else thinks, the more good you can do in the world, the more you can change things and be a positive force of change in other people's eyes. And um, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. Fred Lucy says, any plans to come back to New England this year? Absolutely, I'm heading back to uh, Salem to do the haunted house in um, probably January, or January, September. Um, the Trick School says, I have a question regarding your battery bank and charging them using a battery isolator. How large is the AGM batteries and how many hours would you have to drive to charge them 50%? Uh, I don't know, man. I can drive around the block a couple times and char- have it completely charged. As far as 50%, um, yeah, around the block a couple times. And my um, my battery bank is just a single 93 amp hour. I recommend more, especially if you're doing things like I do with lights and refrigerators and fans all night. VW Airsoft 304 says, Have you ever considered using a large weed sprayer tank with a hand pump to shower? I, I just use this little weed sprayer on occasion. I don't use it very often. Um, I don't need to shower every day. It's Every other day is totally fine. If I'm not doing anything and it's not hot and humid out, every three days is fine. I don't think it's healthy. Like I've noticed since I shower less and you don't use soap or shampoo anymore, mainly because I ran out. Um, my hair is healthy. I've got coconut oil in it now, so it looks oily and especially with that light on it. But my skin just feels so much better without using soap and just using water. And that's as long as it's not hot and humid or I'm actually dirty. I mean, I use like soap, like once a week I use baking soda or the soap that comes in, uh, Plant and Fitness showers, but other than that, man, I haven't used shampoo or anything in my hair except for coconut oil in the last probably six months, and it's never been healthier. Um, Invisible Man asks, fan hygiene, do you brush or vacuum often? I I, uh, sweep my van, like, almost every day because it's so quick, and I take off my shoes before I get in the back because it gets so dirty so fast, and these carpets are already super stained. And when it gets humid, it smells like if you get close enough to the carpet, like you can smell it. And it's like, ugh, I gotta tear these carpets out, dude. But when I, it's that's the way I got it. Even though I washed the hell out of them, they're still, still nasty. Looks like we got one minute left, um, and I'm gonna have to cut out a bunch of dead space. Uh, F in QLD, are you talking about coming to Australia? Are you going to travel and live in a van when here? I have no idea, man. I might get a sailboat. I might live there in a house for a little while. I might do a van. I might do a school bus. I have no idea. I'll figure it out when I get there. Uh, Andrew Sandker says, where do you change your oil in parking lots? Uh, either like in the back of a parking lot where there's nobody around so that I'm not making whatever place that is, look bad, or in like an auto zone or something, parking lot. I just did that a few days ago. Um, Whoa, last question is... Do you think it's this lifestyle was a catalyst for you finding your higher self? It was me. No, it was hopefully, hopelessly falling in love with someone who was... um, perfectly resembled all of my deepest wounds and rejected me and forced me to face myself in a way that um, I would not have had the opportunity to otherwise. So really, it was just a broken heart. Um, The van is just something I decided to do after that. No, it wasn't. It was in between. I don't know. I think that living in a van, especially solo, can be very, very good for that because there's a lot of downtime and there's a lot of solitude, and there's a lot of um, just time to reflect and think about yourself and think about your life and think about what things mean that you wouldn't have if you had to work all the time to afford rent somewhere or something. 
So that's it for today, guys. Um, I'm going to get busy editing the sucker. And um, love yourself.